Sonic, the heart of your system. In today's video, we are going to test lapping of a CPU. And you will probably say, I've seen this a million times, and obviously a lot of people tested this before, and we all know that there is a certain benefit depending on what kind of CPU you're lapping, what kind of condition. So for example, this is an IHS of a 7820X, which is a CPU that's not soldered. So the benefit on a CPU that's not soldered is not as big as on a CPU that's soldered. That's what I would say the rule of thumb. Because whenever you have a soldered CPU, obviously the IHS is placed on top of the CPU. You have the solder preform, which is indium. You heat it up and the indium is melting. And when the indium is solidifying again, it's also shrinking. And therefore the center of the IHS is pulled down a little bit. It's only a little bit, a tiny bit, but typically from my experience, a soldered CPU like a 9980XE will have better results from lapping than a non-soldered CPU like let's say 7820X. But as I said before, lapping will always give you some kind of benefit. We all know that there is always a benefit to it. But the question I'm asking myself is what kind of grid do we know, uh, do we need for lapping the CPU? So this is 40. So that's really, really rough. And I also have a lot of people who are sending me questions, who are calling me at Case King when they have small scratches in the IHS. I heard it a million times that when there's a very small dent in the IHS or if there's scratches in the IHS, people are saying, oh my God, my CPU is broken, it's damaged, temperatures are really bad. I personally don't think that there's any influence to that. So if there's only a small scratch in there, thermal paste should completely compensate that. So in today's video, we're mainly testing what kind of grid you actually need for lapping a CPU or do you even have to lap a CPU because lapping and sanding is not the same. What we're doing today is basically sanding. So we're using a 40, 80, 180, 400, 600 and 1200 sandpapers. And all of those are actually sandpapers. They're not lapping. Lapping is something that's even beyond polishing because um, that's the point where it's extremely flat and typically lapping is something you don't need because you will not see a benefit from lapping the CPU but you will see a benefit from sanding the CPU but the question is how much sanding is actually required and that's what we will test today so we will start with very very rough surface essentially remove the top layer so the nickel layer that's um, covering the copper IHS remove every unevenness of the IHS and then see what kind of temperature benefits we're getting we will use a 7920x which is currently mounted in this system I already performed a testing of the CPU the CPU is non-deleted it's complete stock so we will have more accurate results because from my experience if it's a deleted CPU with liquid metal um, if you perform sanding afterwards you will always move the IHS a little bit and it will have negative influence on your testing results. The testing will be more in inaccurate afterwards. So that's why I decided to go for a non-deleted CPU for this test. So time to get the camera on here and then we will start with the very, very rough 40 cent paper. So after almost 40 minutes I'm back with this CPU and it took much longer than I actually expected. So after I would say 10 minutes almost all of the nickel surface was gone. Only in the four corners I could still see some parts of the nickel being left and for that being removed it took almost another half an hour so that's much longer than I expected. And also the surface is really extremely rough now. If I just move across with my fingernail I can really feel how deep those scratches are inside the CPU. So we're going to test it now again. Test setup is a Rampage 6 Apex, 32 gigabyte memory, crucial ballistic. Doesn't really matter for this test. And the cooling setup is a 360 custom water cooling from EK. The CPU, as I said before, is not deleted. It's a 7920X. It will be overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz at 1.25 volt. Testing with Prime 95, non-AVX Prime, 
12K, so very small FFT size for high power consumption at 15 minutes. And after the 15 minutes, we will be back and take a look at the results. I'm back with the first results and the results are really, really interesting. So stock, as I said before, 7920X testing with Prime95 and then I'm recording the hottest core temperatures, checking what the coldest of the hottest cores is and the hottest core and then the average uh, core temperature across those cores. So minimum, we had 77 degrees Celsius, maximum 91 degrees Celsius, 84.25 average, that's stock. Grinded with 40, we are at minimum 81, maximum 93, average 86.16. So actually grinding with 40 makes it worse. Even though it's flatter, we have a lot of deep scratches in the IHS, which surely make things worse, but I expected it to be even worse. So it's only two degrees less with extremely rough surface. So we only lost two degrees Celsius here. Then moving over to 80, 80 is actually still very rough. It's typically I would skip that. If I typically um, grind CPUs, I start with 180 or 240. And, but looking at 80, it's already improved over stock. So we have minimum 75, maximum 89, average 83.16. So that's already in average one degree over stock with extremely rough surface, but it shows that the evenness helps already. So I will perform all the other tests now. We'll do 180, 400, 600. 1200 and then we will take a look at the final results. I'm back with the results and the results are kind of as expected. So I grinded from 180 to 400 to 600 to 1200 in the end. So CPU is still alive. The final grind I did with, was with uh, 1200. But let's just go forward and take a look at the results. So with uh, the step from 80 to 180, I could feel that the CPU was getting a lot smoother. So if you just uh, touch the CPU afterwards with your fingernail, uh, go across the IHS, you can feel that the surface is just a lot smoother. Even though 180 sounds still quite rough and as I said before, typically when I was grinding CPUs I started with 180 or 240. I didn't even start with something as rough as 40 or 80, but let's just take a look at the results. So moving from 80 to 180, the temperatures did actually not change that much. Minimum stayed at 75, maximum dropped by one degree from 89 to 88 and average was 82.8. So we only saved about 0.3 degrees on average, which is really not that much. And then moving on with 400 uh, sand paper uh, from 400 on, so 400, 600, 1200, I was using wet sanding papers. So adding water to the grinding process, which you can feel makes it even more smooth. And with 400, I could also see that the surface was beginning to become kind of shiny. So you could actually feel that it was getting really, really smooth afterwards. And for the results with 400, the minimum stayed the same with 75, maximum also stayed the same with 88 and average was 82.25. And this shows kind of the direction where we're going that the surface and the roughness at a certain point does not matter that much anymore because thermal paste really compensates most of it. As long as it's very even and it's kind of smooth, it should be fine. So moving on to 600, again, wet sanding paper, but um, it was a different sanding paper. So the surface for some reason got a little bit matte. What's well, not really shiny anymore, but um, it still improved a little bit in temperatures. So minimum now dropped to 74, maximum was 88. Average dropped to 82.0. So there's only small benefit again in average temperatures 0.2 degrees and you could almost argue that this is measurement tolerance and I would agree on it. So from 400 to 600 there was almost no change anymore. Then moving on to 1200 the surface became shiny again because again it was a different sanding paper and also I added water again so grind it again for like 15 minutes, did the test again and the result stayed the same. Minimum 74, maximum 88, average 82.0. So 
actually quite surprising. I kind of thought that there would still be a minimal difference from 600 to 1200 because you could even see the difference. It looked smoother or maybe it was just the impression because it looked shiny afterwards again. But it seems like technically there is not really a difference um, for performance. So when you're thinking of sending your CPU, you should really estimate if it's worth the risk, worth the hassle. Because I've seen results out there of CPUs grinded and they had like 6, 8, 10 degrees better temperatures. But um, from my experience, I grinded, I don't know, like 20, 30 CPUs over the years. I really rarely saw those good results. It's only when the IHS is extremely uneven, which is kind of rare. It happens, but it's really rare. So you should always check the mounting pressure and the image you get from the thermal paste so you can always estimate if your cooler has a very good contact in the middle of the CPU then usually the temps are fine and that was also the case on my 7920X. I could see that the EK block had a very good contact in the middle of the block only the outside did not have the perfect contact so after grinding after it was more even I could see that the outer area had a better contact um, than before than stock and that's where I guess where we got the temperature improvement from but I also saw IHS's out there where the contact was really bad in the middle and the main contact was outside but that can also be caused by your cooler right you never know if your IHS is just uneven or if it's the cooler you can also always put a razor blade on top of your IHS and check what the IHS looks like but also keep in mind that the IHS changes a little bit when you put it into the socket because the Intel ILM will put some mounting pressure onto the IHS. It will bend slightly. You will not really see a big difference, but it will bend slightly. So the result in the socket can be different to the result you have on your table when you're checking with a razor blade. So when it comes to grinding your CPU, 400 to 600 is fine. 600 to 1200 you can do because you want to. But moving on from that, like 2400 and then even lapping, polishing and everything, doesn't really make sense. You will probably not have a performance difference from that, maybe 0.1 degrees Celsius at best, but I wouldn't expect anything. Also keep in mind that you will lose your warranty completely. So if you remove everything that's written on the IHS, nobody will cover your warranty anymore. Even if it's a pre-tested CPU you bought from Case King, a pre-deleted CPU or whatever, if you grind the IHS, there is no warranty anymore. So always keep that in mind when you're thinking about, uh, about grinding a CPU, keep in mind or check if it's worth in your case um, to grind the CPU. So let me know what you think about this whole topic, what kind of experiences you had in the past. Maybe you were one of the lucky guys that had a CPU or let's say unlucky guys where the IHS was really uneven and where it was worth it to grind the CPU. But from my experience, typically it's not really worth it. You will on average maybe get two, three, four degrees Celsius, not more. Of course, it also depends on the use case. So Prime95 will give you a higher delta than gaming. Gaming, you will probably see no delta at all. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below. See you soon.